AMD have just announced the RDNA 4 graphics architecture, Radeon RX 9070 series of GPUs, ML-powered FSR4 upscaling, and new Ryzen 9000 X3D desktop CPUs. I've got all the information for you in this video, plus a few thoughts on what AMD has shown off so far. The big surprise out of CES 2025 is that AMD hasn't fully launched new RDNA 4 GPUs at the show, instead deciding to merely preview the new architecture and a couple of graphics card models. While AMD did announce the Radeon RX 9070 XT and Radeon RX 9070, probably gonna take a little while to get used to those names, they did not provide any specifications for these parts, any performance figures, pricing, or a release date outside of a vague Q1 2025. This is a pretty big disappointment given many were expecting full product details from AMD's RDNA 4 launch. You'll just have to keep waiting to learn everything about these models. It really seems like AMD are not willing to commit to providing concrete information ahead of NVIDIA's GeForce 50 series announcement, which we're expecting in just a few hours from now. This gives AMD more flexibility to respond to NVIDIA's new generation for better or worse. If they really want to disappoint gamers this generation and ensure RDNA 4 is a flop, they would wait for RTX 50 series pricing and make their equivalent models slightly cheaper, a strategy which categorically didn't work with the previous generation and absolutely should not be attempted again, but who knows, we might be in for a repeat this year anyway. A more positive perspective to take is that AMD might be waiting to see what NVIDIA are doing to ensure their products are highly competitive and to better market their cards in comparison to NVIDIA. If NVIDIA decide to give us a decent price to performance improvement this generation, then AMD could respond with even more aggressive pricing later or make minor configuration adjustments. But if they set pricing now in anticipation of what NVIDIA might do, only to anticipate incorrectly and set prices that make their product look bad, RDNA 4 is off to a bad start. And realistically, the most important factor for AMD is how good RDNA 4 looks in comparison to NVIDIA's new products. So what are AMD actually announcing? Let's get into that after a word from our CES sponsor. The Harbour Unboxed CES coverage is brought to you by Gigabyte and their new range of X870 and Z890 motherboards, pairing the latest AMD and Intel processors. Gigabyte Z890 range supports Intel's new Core Ultra processors, while the X870 range supports AMD's Ryzen 9000 series, including the gaming flagship Ryzen 7 9800X3D. All models offer robust power delivery with optimal cooling, screwless M.2 storage, and AI-powered overclocking software to ensure you get the most out of your CPU. The stacked I.O. offers various connectivity options, including Wi-Fi 7, up to 10 gigabit LAN, Thunderbolt 4, and plenty of USB ports. Now, a new feature of the AI top models is the included utility that allows you to train your own AI models at home or for small slash large scale businesses. Gigabyte's X870 and Z890 motherboards are available right now from your favorite online retailers. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. So like I said, AMD are announcing the Radeon RX 9070 XT and RX 9070, which will be available in Q1 2025 from a range of partners, including the usual brands like Asus, Gigabyte, Sapphire, and PowerColor. MSI will not be producing RDNA 4 products, having exited that market during the RDNA 3 generation, though they haven't provided an official reason as to why. Our understanding is there's some sort of relationship issue at the moment between AMD and MSI. You can see a variety of partner models on screen here, but AMD also seem to have snuck in a new reference model into the picture right here in both a three and two fan design. This reference design was previously revealed through an AMD ad a few weeks ago. As for the RDNA 4 architecture, again, we're pretty light on details at the moment, but AMD have made some disclosures at CES. To start with, RDNA 4 will be built on the same family of TSMC nodes as RDNA 3. In this case for RDNA 4, a four nanometer node, whereas for RDNA 3, the compute die was built on N5. But either way, similar sort of process tech. The expectation is that RDNA 4 uses a different design to RDNA 3, no longer separating the GPU cores and memory controller into separate dies on separate nodes, but there's been no confirmation of exactly what that looks like. AMD are touting a wide range of architectural improvements with RDNA 4. The headlining feature is an optimized compute unit, though AMD elaborated to us in a briefing that this includes a significant change to the architecture, higher IPC, and increased frequency, which sounds a little more than a mere optimization. 
This suggests that RDNA 4 should see a notable performance improvement from a similar number of compute units to RDNA 3. RDNA 3 models typically clocked between 2.1 and 2.3 gigahertz for their game clock, so pushing that up in combination with better IPC should lead to a healthy performance gain. In addition, RDNA 4 features a massive change to the AI aspects to the architecture, and while AMD kept vague what this actually means, they did say they've added a number of capabilities to the design. The ray tracing engine has been overhauled, leading to improved ray tracing performance, though again, we don't have specifics. There's also a second generation Radiance display engine, suggesting further improvements to display connectivity relative to RDNA 3. The media encoder is substantially better according to AMD2, and they actually provide some specifics to this claim. A footnote reveals this is comparing H.264 image quality using VMAF quality scores between RDNA3 and RDNA4 in three games. They've got Borderlands 3, Far Cry 6, and Watch Dogs Legion, and they did this testing at 1080p and 4K. H.264 was a massive weak point to AMD's media encoder, so it's encouraging to see these media encoder claims relate to improving that, given H.264 is still widely used. Hopefully there are no hardware bugs with the encoder this time though, like outputting AV1 at 1082p instead of 1080p, which was a real issue with RDNA3. While AMD didn't provide concrete performance claims for RDNA4 just yet, they did provide a bit of a teaser on this slide talking about Radeon branding. In the dark grey, we have existing generations like the GeForce 40 series and RX 7000 series, and a dashed line indicating where AMD believes the RTX 5000 series will fall, a bit faster than current models. Then on the right, we have the positioning for both the RX 9070 and RX 9060 series. And yes, there's a mention here of the 9060 with no further information, a bit of a trend with this presentation. Where the RX 9070 series matches up with the current cards is around the level of the RTX 4070 Ti and RX 7900 XT for the highest tier 9070 model, which has long been rumored as the performance ceiling for RDNA 4. AMD are suggesting the lower RX 9070 model could be in the range of the RX 7800 XT, and then we'll see the RX 9060 series offering performance at best between the 7700 XT and 7800 XT, and for the lowest tier cards, around the 7600 XT. That is, of course, if all of this turns out to be accurate. AMD also say this naming scheme was chosen for two reasons. Firstly, to match their direct competitor, essentially copying NVIDIA to make it easier for people to figure out how AMD cards compare. Basically, they are saying the RX 9070 series is a competitor to the RTX 5070 series, though whether that means for both performance and pricing remains to be seen. Secondly, they say the 9000 series name was chosen to align with their CPU series, and also because 8000 series GPU branding is being used for mobile designs with RDNA 3.5. The name, it doesn't really matter too much to be honest. What matters is if AMD can deliver a strong graphics card with competitive features and great value. Renaming their lineup so it looks more like an Nvidia card isn't the key to more sales. The key is creating a product similar to whatever the RTX 5070 ends up being, to justify the match name of course, and then smashing Nvidia down with better pricing and value. AMD also announced a couple of new features coming with RDNA 4 GPUs. There's Adrenaline AI, which, okay, cool, whatever. Then the much bigger feature and more important feature for gamers, FSR 4, which is finally moving to machine learning based upscaling. Again, not much detail being provided here outside of FSR 4 being developed for RDNA 4 and it being designed for high quality 4K upscaling. The hope here is that FSR 4's quality will improve to the point of being truly competitive with DLSS, which is more likely to happen with an AI enhanced algorithm like Nvidia are already using and like Intel uses with XESS. But we haven't been provided any demonstrations of FSR 4 and we don't know when it will launch, so can't really comment too much further. There's a few additional tidbits though. FSR 4 is designed to use the AI accelerators built into RDNA 4, but AMD hasn't confirmed whether FSR 4 is exclusive to RDNA 4 graphics cards or whether it will be broadly available like FSR 3, which works not only on older AMD GPUs, but GPUs from Nvidia and Intel as well. AMD also said that FSR 4 will provide not just an image quality improvement compared to FSR 3, but a performance improvement as well, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I have to see what that means later. I also spotted a rather interesting footnote, which reads, 
AMD FSR4 upgrade feature only available on AMD Radeon RX 9070 series graphics for supported games with AMD FSR 3.1 already integrated. This implies that AMD has developed some sort of conversion system that will take a game with FSR 3.1 and automatically upgrade it to FSR 4 when you have an RX 9070 graphics card. That said, I asked AMD about this strange footnote that doesn't seem related to any of the main points on the slide, and they declined to elaborate or explain this, which is a little unusual. Why is it there if you're not willing to explain it? Anyway, if this feature does exist in the way the footnote seems to suggest, it would be a very solid way to launch FSR 4, given that FSR 3.1 is already available in around 50 games, according to AMD's website. So if you could just upgrade those games, it's a pretty nice level of game support right out of the bat. Game support is crucial to making FSR 4 a genuine value addition to upcoming GPUs. FSR 4 would not enhance the value of RDNA 4 if it took two to three years for it to be supported in a wide number of games. In that sort of scenario, DLSS would still have a large advantage in game support and thus would still be worth paying for. But if FSR 4 can launch with decent game support right off the bat, it will go a long way to closing that gap, provided image quality and performance also holds up. Various board partners will be showing off RX 9070 models at CES 2025, so we'll hopefully get some hands-on time with them in the coming few days right here in Las Vegas. For now though, let's move to talking about CPUs briefly because there really wasn't much else to say about the GPUs. At CES, AMD announced two additional desktop Ryzen 9000 CPUs, the Ryzen 9 9950X3D and Ryzen 9 9900X3D. These are exactly as expected, bringing second gen 3D vCache technology, the 16 and 12 core CPUs, providing a single CPU with great performance for gamers and creators. If you had to guess what the specifications of these CPUs looked like, you'd probably be right. The Ryzen 9 9950X3D with 16 cores packs 128 megabytes of total L3 cache, 64 meg from the original Zen 5 CCDs and 64 meg stacked beneath one of the CCDs. The other CCD remains without vCache in a similar design to the 7950X3D. Scheduling is also required to ensure games run on the 8 core CCD with vCache, while the other CCD is designed to run at the highest possible frequencies. In this case, 5.7 GHz, the same max clock speed as the 7950X3D. The TDP also identical between those models at 170 watts, so this is basically a straight Zen 4 to Zen 5 core architecture upgrade. The 9900X3D, the 12 core model, is also what you'd expect, 128 meg of L3 cache and up to a 5.5 gigahertz max boost frequency, so 100 megahertz lower than the 7900X3D. The TDP remains the same at 120 watts. No pricing was given for either of these CPUs and AMD has only said they will be available in Q1 of 2025. As for performance, AMD claim in their first party benchmarks that the 9950X3D will deliver performance roughly equivalent to the 9800X3D in games, AMD said within 1%. This means an 8% improvement compared to the 7950X3D in AMD's testing across 40 titles at 1080p high settings, which again AMD says is similar to how the 9800X3D compared to the 7800X3D. Relative to Intel's 285K, AMD believes the 9950X3D should be 20% faster in games. In productivity apps and creator workloads, AMD are quoting a 13% increase in performance relative to the 7950X3D across 20 apps and a 10% increase relative to the Core Ultra 9 285K. This is why AMD believe the 9950X3D will be the best part for both gamers and creators as it offers both better gaming and a better productivity performance than the 285K in their testing, though of course we'll have to verify whether that's true in our full review when the parts launch, so stay tuned for that. The rest of AMD's announcements at CES relate to mobile parts, which I'm not going to cover today because we don't really focus on laptops and gaming handhelds. There were lots of mentions of AI too because of course there were. Some of the laptop CPUs even have AI in the name, like the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus Pro 395, which is a real name for a real product, so yeah, anyway. That's it for AMD's announcements at CES 2025 so far. More of a teaser from the company than a full product launch, unfortunately, but all the new products that AMD talked about are not too far away. So we should learn more about RDNA 4 in particular shortly. So yeah, that's it. 
here we are in Las Vegas for CES. Thanks to Gigabyte for bringing us out this year. If you want to support the channel here at Hard Run Box, we have our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to some cool benefits, Discord community, monthly live streams, BTS coverage, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching. We'll be, we'll be back soon for more CES 2025 coverage right here at the show. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.